Hey guys, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, good morning, sir. Yeah, audible. Yeah, thank you. So yesterday we completed brute force and I started C2C and after that uh, some issue and uh, we are not able to complete. We'll complete that one. After that, we'll go to malware. So one of the system is got compromised already and it is communicating to command and control server. So here, first you can understand the use case or investigation part. Already system is got compromised. That means it's a true positive. And communicating to command and control server, meaning here, who will maintain the command and control server? Attacker will maintain the C2C or command and control server, meaning here, remote control. So from whatever system attacker is controlling, that particular system, we can call it as a command and control server. So he is compromising our system and our systems are acting as a bots or zombies. In that scenario, how can you do the instant investigation? So that is the investigation and that is the use case is about. In this scenario, so first where we have to identify these particular outbound connections, obviously it's a firewall. Already we discussed yesterday true positive. It is a subset of the water we discussed yesterday. Third scenario, water we discussed, brute force attack is got compromised. It's a true positive from the attacker. In this one, same thing, it will subset. C2C compromise system also, it's a subset. Now, so as per the cyber kill chain process, you know already these pages are there, all these pages. And command and control page is phase number six. So already it is got compromised. Sorry, not this one. Recon, weaponization. Transport or delivery, exploitation, installation, command and control. This command and control is also called as C2C. This is also called as a remote control. Finally, actions on objective. Okay, in this scenario, already command and control phase number six, system is got compromised and it is communicating to command and control server. First, we have to identify the, so obviously for every, any system, so first, once this alert is received, we have to inform to our other team members and we have to send the ticket to ourselves that is common to each and every incident. Alert will come through. Dashboard or email notification of the SIM tool. So that's the first step. And in the second step, what we have to see, we have to acknowledge it to other team members. And third step, we have to create a ticket in the ticketing tool. Fourth step, we have to classify the instant. So it's a command and control server compromised. So that command and control compromised, maybe it vary from scenario to scenario. That may be brute force, because of the brute force attack, system will get compromised. Because of the dictionary attack, system will get compromised. Or because of flooding time, system will get compromised. Maybe through phishing email, system will get compromised. Or maybe through DOS or DDoS. Okay, so it will vary scenario to scenario. For each and every attack, whatever we discussed, 50 to 60, this case is applicable to 56 to 60 attacks. Okay. So classify the instant, just it's a true positive you can classify. And after that, okay, so then you can go and gather the triasing of the incident. So same thing, whatever we discussed, we have to gather. It will it is combination of both. So attacker IP address will be there and also so indicator compromises. So if victim IP will be there. So how we attacker IP address will be there because it's communicating to the command and control server. Command and control server will be into the attacker. So nothing but that is the attacker IP address or system. So this is common. All this information we have to gather. Is that sufficient or something we have to add additionally? in the IOC side. 
you can apply all 50 to 60 category and whether all the 50 to 60 category, whether I covered everything or not. Yes or no. In this particular, whatever trias I have done. Yes, sir. Not exactly. Sir, uh, uh, before we proceed forward, uh, how we can find, I mean, how did we know uh, the system is already compromised? Means manually, we have to check the RAM performance or uh, different behavior of the system. Based yeah. on this... Uh, so basically, manual. we have to create a logic or use case for compromise scenario directly. So this one is already compromised scenario only direct whatever logic we created so based on the performance and based on the bandwidth based on the automatic restarts and shutdowns and based on the signature basically it's already known attack so all the signatures we have to provide if we are going to the ibm qr radar tool or splunk or any other tool we have signatures will be there for example in ibm qr radar we can call qids q radar id numbers all those qid numbers we have to give and once that particular logic it is matching, we have to conclude that the system is got compromised and also based on the performance, as you mentioned, and bandwidth or automatic restarts and shutdowns and everything we have to see. Okay, when we click on the uh, uh, incident in the SIM tool, automatically it will display some details. Yes, everything, everything, all the log, uh, all the log source information it will see and also all the um, IOS and AVI and IVA information it will see and performance related issues, everything it will appear in the payload and also in the overall alert, no alert notification itself. Can we get the information related uh, already system is compromised CNC position? I mean, command yes, company. yes. Okay, okay, okay. Fine, yeah, fine. Everything it is available in the alert itself. Okay, thank you, sir. Welcome. Additionally, something is missing, but you have to see, uh, you have to think about all the 50 to 60 categories, whether I covered everything 50 to 60 category attacks in this trias. No. So if it is malware category, so additionally, we have to gather some other information also. That is file path. Related file As information. Okay. Yes, file yes. category and size and which format of the file. Yes, correct. File category, hash value of the file, file path, file name. So these information, so we have to gather everything. After gathering this one, now, so whenever we are saying one of the server, one of the system is got compromised and it is communicating to command and control server. We know which logs we have to analyze and we have to reconfirm whether it is really happened or not. We, we discussed yesterday already. Which log sources logs we can verify and we can conclude that okay, really system is got compromised. Yes. Which log sources logs? Any guess? We discussed yesterday. True positive side, brute force to true positive. Firewall logs. Firewall logs, we have to go and we have to see. So under the which log, uh, which system is got compromised and what are the outbound connections are going from our in internal end user system. So okay. whenever any outbound communication, please remember this keyword. Whenever any outbound connections are going from the end user system to the outside of the world or attacker mission, Always please remember, most of the cases, it is a firewall only. So each and every traffic, it is hitting into the end user system that may be inbound traffic and whatever the traffic is going away from internal system to the outside machine, the traffic is available in the firewall side. So in this scenario, firewall locks, we have to analyze really whether that communication is going outside or not. Okay, as a confirmation, as a evidence path. So firewall locks, always we have to verify. In the alert notification, obviously we'll get the victim IP and also attacker IP. Just you can go to the filter out option if it's log activity tab of the IBM Q radar. If it is logarithm, we have the direct filter option is available. If it is Splunk, we have filter option is available. If it's exabeam, we have to provide the source IP equals to, okay, so 1.1.1, .1 destination IP equals to 10.10.10, .10 .10 we have to write a query. So vendor to vendor, this particular filtering will be vary. So once you are confirming this one, otherwise what I said yesterday through manual way, how can we verify? Through manual way. So how can we verify? So whether really outbound connections are going or not. All this information, it is available in the uh, okay, SIM tool itself under the part of firewall logs. 
So, but if you want to verify manually, yesterday I have shown already. So we have to log into the firewall voting. Tool. Yeah. Firewall tool. yeah. Yes, firewall, firewall tool. We have to go and under the logs topic. So just we have to see source IP, destination IP. Source IP you can give attacker IP and destination IP you can give as a victim IP. So then you can see it. whether really outbound connections are going or not. In those two uh, ways, uh, which uh, evidence we have to attach? Uh, yeah, anything is fine. So okay. if you have the firewall access directly, you can take it from firewall. Otherwise, you can take directly from SIM tool also, you can take it. Yes. Yeah. So firewall logs always, please remember, whenever we can say outbound connections are going on from any end user system and something getting is get compromised. So we have to see about firewall logs, outbound connections. Okay, so after that, what we have to do, obviously. So next step, what we have to do, already we confirmed, okay, so outbound connections are going on and system is getting compromised. Next step. Immediately block the that uh, external IP address. Prior to that one, we have to do the containment. So okay. containment side, we have to do the network isolation. So next one, uh, we have to block the IP address. So we have to do the network isolation. This network isolation where we can do, either we can do under the Active Directory, we can uh, remove the IP address and we can disconnect the system. Otherwise, we can directly do under the EDR tool. Mm -hmm. So as I said, something getting compromised, it's not a one person job. Minimum two or three persons are required. It's a completely teamwork and team collaboration and team support. One person is not sufficient to take care of the entire thing. One person has to coordinate with the firewall team one person has to coordinate with the active directory and one person is contact to asset owner or server owner. It depends on scenario to scenario as well. Okay. So entire team is involved in the call basically. And we have to bring even firewall team or EDR team or active directory team in that call. So it's a on call or maybe directly priority one ticket basically these particular scenarios. Yes, it's a true Are you getting? Really yeah, good. it's a true positive. So network isolation and after that we have to block the IP address in the firewall. After that we have to check any data, data leakage is uh, happened or not, any backup is. Yes, uh, blocking of the IP address in the firewall we have to do. Next one is change the password immediately. So this one and also we can see, so if it's dedicated to malware side, it is getting compromised. In that scenario, we have to block the hash value also. Sir, network isolation, Jason Tarota, password change, Sina Chipanathano, attacker. Yeah, we have to reset the password and then we can do the network isolation. Otherwise, uh, even he's not connecting in the network also, we can do the password reset. Okay, okay, okay. Already compromise IP in the Gavati. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, if it is dedicated to, okay, so malware category of the attack. So, we have to find out the hash value of the file and we have to block the hash value in the EDR. So basically, this one scenario to scenario, it will vary. Okay, so it is the type of category, malware category. We have to take this. Take the hash value. Yes. Yeah. So better, I can go in the generic way. So change the passwords. Uh, next one is uh, we have to see whether any lateral movement it's happened or not. How can you verify this one? Firewall, we check the uh, from the uh, IP address based on the IP addresses. Any connections are established or not? Yeah. From the attacker IP address, how many inbound connections are occurring and also how many inbound connections are it's happened? It is, it is communicating to one end user system or more than one user system. In case from the attacker IP, that communication is happening to more than one system, directly we can conclude that lateral movement it's happened. Lateral movement meaning here, attack will compromise one system through networking protocols and tactics and techniques. Attack will compromise other systems also. For example, spear phishing. So spear phishing side, attacker will send either single user or group of users through phishing email. Either he will compromise one system or more than one system. So forget about single here, it's more than one system. So that is called lateral movement. So lateral movement, how we can verify in the firewall likes. So source IP is the attacker IP address. And the next one is victim IP is how many missions that particular communication it's going on. So that is lateral movement side. Can we it's, check in the SIM tool, sir? That, directly same. we can check in the SIM tool. That's what I am saying. Ah, so yeah, directly yeah. we can give the source IP under the firewall side directly. So under the firewall filtering, you can give source IP as a attacker IP address and destination IP as a how many connections it is going with how many IPs it is communicating. 
for example, if we are going IBM Q radar, so we have log activity tab, we have filter option is available. Under the filter, source IP is attacker IP address and destination IP is with how many IPs that communication is happening, just you can verify. Okay. So next one, data leakage, it's happened. Data, DLP logs also we have to analyze. Is there any data copied by the attacker? So block IP address, you can do change password and lateral movement and also data locate, leakage. These are all the verifications we have to do. So after doing this one, next step, what will, what will you do as per the instant life cycle management process? I think recovery. Yeah, recovery, data recovery side. So whether all the data it is available in the laptop or server, we have to verify. And finally, in the post-mortem report or lessons learned phase, uh, we have to find out where, when, how the system is got compromised. We have to document as a version control by the L3 team, nothing but you. And you have to review with your SOC manager. And once SOC manager is up, okay, so reviewed and it's fine. Then we have to schedule a call with the our uh, client or customer. And finally, he will review the document, whatever we created. Finally, he will approve it. So in future, he will say like, we should not repeat this one. Any, we have to pay money to the respective client or customer it, because at the time of project we are getting, whenever any true positive scenario, something it is compromised, everything you have to take the accountability and responsibility. So that is the way how the terms and condition, even any data breach or data exfiltration it has happened or any SL it is crossed, you have to make a penalty. For example, in my ex company, so what is the penalty or any data breach it's happened or any system is getting compromised, we are paying 6,000 Great Britain pounds, pounds for one system is getting compromised or else uh, any SLA it is getting crossed. So that is the reason always true positive are very, very critical for us. And also data, any system is getting compromised also, it's very important. Any SLA crossed also, it's very important. Okay, that's why I said yesterday. So don't think about only quantity, quantity, quantity. Please think about quality. When I say quality, whatever instance you're working on, it should, it should not reach to the SLA. That is the mean by quality. Clear. Sir, so, there is no any data leakage. Then we, uh, do we need to pay something else? Uh, need... No, no. So if it is ransomware category of the attack only, something it is leaked already and we don't have the existing data as a backup, yes, we have to pay money. Yeah, that, that means we are not providing the full-fledged security to the client. Exactly. Okay, okay. Only ransomware category of the attack side only. So he will encrypt the file and that file password he has. So in that scenario, if you don't, you are not maintaining the backup. Yes, obviously we have to pay money. Only for only ransomware category of the scenario only that we can discuss either today itself. Yes. So this is guys, this is also one of the favorite interview question. It's very simple only. 